So this video is going to take a look at bonding and hybridization. Uh, the first video is going to review the topics we did in our lab last week. And then the second and the third video are going to focus on some additional topics um, that we haven't had a chance yet to explore. Um, first thing we're going to talk about are ionic bonds. Oops, sorry. Ionic bonds um, occur between oppositely charged ions, a metal and a nonmetal. They are not a true connection. They are held together by forces um, that cause that pairing to be really stable. Um, there is an actual transfer of electrons that's going to occur, and when you see this take place, you will have a polar bond because one um, side, the nonmetal portion, will be um, very electronegative compared to the metal. And a covalent bond, which is what we're going to focus on drawing our Lewis structures about, we're seeing a sharing of valence electrons when the sharing is equal. Um, typically between two identical elements, your diatomic molecules, you would have a nonpolar covalent bond. However, between carbon and hydrogen, you see very similar electronegativities, which is why um, hydrocarbons, and we'll talk about this in our next chapters, um, um, are made of carbon and hydrogen bonds, and those two are typically very nonpolar. When you have um, elements like oxygen and hydrogen, or nitrogen and hydrogen, with very different um, electronegativities, um, you will see polar um, covalent bonds. When we're drawing Lewis structures, those Lewis structures for elements are based on the valence electrons. Each of your groups um, tends to have a set number of valence electrons, group 1 being 1, group 14 being 4, group 18 being 8, with the exception of helium. And you see here we represent one dot for each of the electrons in that outermost valence shell for the elements in a given group. And remember that all elements in a given group will have the same number of valence electrons. Lewis structures um, are also called Lewis electron dot structures in your book. Um, again, these show the valence electrons being distributed between atoms in a molecule. You will have both lone and bonding pairs depending on how many atoms are connected to that central atom and how many pairs of electrons that central atom can take. Um, we represent the bonding pairs with either a single line or a pair of dots representing the two electrons. Um, Lone electron pairs are typically represented with dots as well. Um, and the goal with, with all of our Lewis structures is to get eight electrons um, to have those atoms in the cent um, both central and terminal atoms, the ones on the outside, to obey the octet rule by having the same number of valence electrons as a representative noble gas. When we draw our structures, we want to put um, in the um, center the atom that has um, the lowest electronegativity, the one that um, is least interested in having electrons assigned solely to itself. Um, hydrogen will never be put on the inside, um, and neither will your halogens. Um, if you have to choose between oxygen and a halogen, oxygen will go in the middle. Um, we figure out our valence electrons by looking at each of our atoms. Remembering that if it's a negatively charged ion, we have to add the charge to get our total electrons. And if it's a positively charged ion, we subtract that charge. Um, we start by putting one pair of electrons between each of the atoms so that we can form that skeleton. And then we place the remaining electron pairs, lone pairs, around the terminal atoms, excluding hydrogen, so that each of the terminal atoms has eight electrons, or four pairs. If there are any electrons remaining, those are placed on the central atom. And if for some reason the central atom does not have four pairs of electrons, we will form a multiple bond, either a double or a triple bond, in order to make um, that atom also be um, meeting the octet rule. Apparently I did not do a good job of setting up this structure. Hold on one second. Okay, hopefully this will work a little bit better. Um, so we're going to draw some Lewis structures just to review the rules for that. We're going to start with POCl3. Um, phosphorus is the least electronegative element of the group that we're working with, so it goes in the center. We have 32 valence electrons, 5 for phosphorus, 
6 for oxygen, and then 7 for each of the chlorines. So 21 plus 6, 27 plus another 5 gives me 32, or 16 pairs. I'm going to use up four of the pairs connecting the phosphorus to the oxygen and the three chlorines. I need to find a home for the remaining 12 pairs. So I will put first three on each of the outside atoms, each of my terminal atoms. Um, I have no more electrons to place, um, so now I just want to double check phosphorus, and it too um, has all the electrons that it needs. So this would be a stable Lewis structure. Next one we're going to look at is nitrogen trifluoride, NF3. Five valence electrons for nitrogen, seven for fluorine gives me a total of 26. Nitrogen is going to go in the center, the fluorine's on the outside. I'm going to use up three of my 13 pairs connecting nitrogen to the fluorine atoms. That leaves me with 13 left, excuse me, 10 left. So three will go around each of the fluorine atoms, and another pair will go on the center nitrogen atom since it does not have its four pairs, and I have one remaining. I forgot on the last slide, guys, sorry. Um, you may want to pause it at this point if you still are copying the structure, as I will be moving on to the next slide. Here we have ClO3 minus, so this is a chlorate ion. Um, this time we're actually going to have chlorine go in the center because there's three of the oxygen atoms, and chlorine, if you have to choose between it and oxygen, oxygen is slightly more electronegative than chlorine because it's further up our periods. Um, we have 26 valence electrons, 6 for the three oxygen atoms, which gives me 18. 7 for the chlorine, which gives me 25, and then one more for the minus 1 charge. So chlorine's in the center, 13 pairs of electrons, three of which are going to get used pairing up chlorine to each of the oxygens. That leaves me with 10, 3 for each of the oxygens. So all the oxygens have fulfilled the octet rule. I only have three pairs around chlorine. I have one pair left. And the reason I kept this one in the slideshow is that I wanted you to remember that when you have that minus one charge, you do need to put brackets and the minus one on the outside, or at a minimum just the minus one. If you have not copied everything down, you may want to pause it at this point. So we've focused so far or on elements that fulfill the octet rule. Now we're going to look at some exceptions, including boron and beryllium because these are stable with four, fewer than four pairs. Boron typically is very stable with three pairs, beryllium just with two, um, as well as hydrogen, which only needs one pair of electrons, so it fulfills what's called the duet rule. As we've talked about in class previously, when you have elements in periods three or higher, they have empty d orbitals and occasionally f orbitals that are available for them. And so if you have more pairs of electrons then um, left and the central atoms has its four pairs, you can usually put those electrons on that central atom um, to form a stable Lewis structure. Again, that will only happen in periods three or higher. So we're going to look at chlorine trifluoride. Chlorine is less electronegative than fluorine, so it goes in the center. 28 valence electrons. Sorry, I keep forgetting about this. 7 for each of the halogens. There's 4 of them, so that gives you the 28. 3 fluorines on the outside. I have 14 pairs. I just used up 3 connecting chlorine to each of the fluorines. And now I have 11 pairs left. 3 will go on each fluorine, leaving me with 2 pairs. Chlorine can, is in period 3 or higher, so it can take both the 4th and the 5th pair to form a stable Lewis structure. BCL3, boron, has three valence electrons. Chlorine has seven. So 21 plus three gives me 24 valence electrons. Boron's going to go in our center. Chlorine's on the outside. Connecting them up will use up three of my 12 pairs. I will use the remaining 12 pairs, excuse me, 12 pairs total. I use three to connect boron to each of the chlorines. That leaves me with nine pairs. So I will take care of those by putting the three pairs of electrons on each of the chlorine atoms. Boron will not get a double bond here, even though it just has three pairs, because remember, boron is very stable with the three pairs of electrons. 
it started with three valence electrons, so it just needs to pair up each of its valence electrons to form a stable Lewis structure. If you have not gotten all this down, you may want to pause it at this time. We also have SEF6, selenium hexafluoride, six valence electrons for selenium, seven for fluorine, so 42 plus six gives me 48 valence electrons, 24 pairs. Selenium goes in the middle. I'm going to use up six of those pairs connecting selenium to each of the fluorine atoms. That leaves me with 18 pairs, three on each of the fluorines. We'll take care of all of those 18 pairs. And again, selenium has already produced a stable molecule by allowing the extra pairs of electrons to form bonds with the two extra fluorine atoms. So it has six pairs of electrons that are being shared between it and the six fluorine atoms. If you need a copy more, please put this on pause right now before I move on further. Here we have Cl3 minus, so 21 valence electrons for the three chlorines, plus a minus one charge, which gives me 22 valence electrons. The chlorine atoms are on the outside. I have 11 pairs. I've used up two of them, connecting the two chlorine atoms to the central chlorine atom. I have nine left. Three will go on each of the outside chlorine atoms, the terminal atoms, and that leaves me with three pairs. So I'm going to put those three on chlorine. And that will produce a stable molecule since chlorine can take more than two pairs, excuse me, more than four pairs of electrons on its central atom. If you need to pause at this point, I would do so. And I'm being silly. Um, you need to make sure you put the brackets in the minus one charge. I'm sorry I told you to pause before. Make sure you get that before you move on.